Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So it looks like we've got a new build of ETA Hen by Lightning Mods. This is version 1.7b and it adds one brand new feature called DPI or Direct Package Installer, which acts the same as the Remote Package Installer for the PS4 by Flats. It's the same idea and it doesn't have any of the compromises that I've shown with previous methods of Remote Package Installing on the PS5 before. So you can get really fast transfer speeds with this. I managed to install an 18 gigabyte game in less than three minutes. I'll show you guys how to set this up to get the best possible transfer rates. And it also installs the package files while it's downloading them. So there's no two or three step process involved. So this is definitely by far the best remote package installer we've got so far for the PS5. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to get it fully set up here. So firstly, you need to run the jailbreak. So head onto your exploit host, run the jailbreak, once you get the jailbreak running, you're going to load the ETA Hen payload. Make sure it's version 1.7. Might take a little while for the other exploit host to get updated to include the updated payload. So make sure you are running 1.7. And when you run ETA Hen 1.7 or higher, you should get a notification that should show DPI running once the payload is loaded in the notification. And you also want to note down your PS5's IP address that shows up in the notification. It's also showing up there in the exploit host as well. So note down that IP address. And once you get back onto the home menu, I would also recommend using a DNS blocker or using some other method to block updates. Because the problem with this remote package installer method, it's the same issue we have on the PS4. It uses the same HTTP method that your normal games do when they're updating. So whenever you get a game update while you're trying to transfer a file with the remote package installer, you are potentially going to get that install interrupted or time out because of the official game updates that are trying to be installed. So if you have a DNS blocker on there to stop your game updates, then that would be preferred. So you can use Nomadic's DNS if you head into your settings, go over to the network settings and then go to set up an internet connection find your registered network, hit the options button and select advanced settings, and then scroll down to your DNS settings and change it from automatic to manual. And then for the primary DNS, you want to enter 62.210.38.117. So if you enter that as your primary DNS, that's Nomadic's DNS server, enter that IP address there and then click done, and then save your settings and that should block your updates so from there you can just clear out any updates that you may have had in your downloads folder and then it should not try to download any more now that you have that dns on there so the dns address is not required it's just a handy thing to have to stop game updates so now that you have everything set up we can switch over to the computer to get the companion software for this okay so the program that you want to download with this is going to be the ps4 remote package sender by this developer right here. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name because I'll butcher it. But uh, yeah, this is a really awesome remote package installer tool. It's the most extensive one that I've come across so far. And it's now added support for PS5 with, for ETA Hen in collaboration with Lightning Mods. So what you want to do is go ahead and download this. There's lots of different versions that supports not only Windows, but also Mac OS and Linux as well. So download the version for your operating system. If you're downloading the Windows version, I would recommend downloading the, the single EXE version, which has all of the dependencies packed into the actual application. So it's just one EXE file. However, that might cause some antiviruses to freak out about it, in which case you can just download the Windows Zip, which is the unpacked version, which should be fine. So I've went ahead and downloaded the standalone EXE. And then from there, we can run the executable once you've got it copied over to your desktop. So once we have the application open, we're going to head into the config settings to set things up. So firstly, we need to select our server IP. So this is all the network adapters on my computer. You want to select the network adapter that's providing your computer with the internet connection. So if you're using Wi-Fi, that's probably going to be the one that's marked Wi-Fi. And of course, if it's a wired connection that you're using on your computer, then it will be the Ethernet adapter that you're going to select. So I'm going to go ahead and select Wi-Fi. And then we want to select the server app. In this case, we've got Express, Apache, Nginx, Proxy, Remote, and Custom. I would just leave it on Express, which should be the fastest one. So I just leave it on that one. It's the one that's selected by default. You can also change the port number if you want to. And if we click the refresh button, if it says running, then we should be good. We have the web server up and running here. 
So next we have the package base path. So one of the options is you can either just drag package files from anywhere on your computer into the application and then install them. Or you can point the application to a specific directory like your downloads directory where all of your package files are stored and then it will list them all and you can select whichever one from there to install. You can add multiple into a queue and install them one after the other. So what we can do here, I can just enter manually, paste in the path to my downloads folder and click OK. If you have a lot of package files in there, it might take it a while to, uh, to scan them all. So just give it a few seconds or maybe a minute or so for it to scan all of the directories. And then you can also tick the box to enable subdirectory scan. So if you have any package files that are in multiple folders, folders within folders, then you can go ahead and enable the subdirectory scan which will allow you to detect all of the package files that are hidden inside those subdirectories. So we can also enable the queue scanner to automatically start the next install process on the queue. And then we want to enter our PS5's IP address. So this is the same IP address uh, that I told you guys to note down earlier from the PS5. Then we need to make sure we select for PlayStation app, we need to select PS5 ETA Hen, otherwise this will not work on the PS5. And then we can test connection to make sure we have a good connection. Now, the next thing we've got is request timeout and update interval. So you'll need to increase this if, if you're using a wireless connection. If you're on a wireless connection, you'll have to probably bump this up to max, which is eight seconds for the timeout because wireless is slower and therefore it's going to be timing out more frequently. So you want to increase the timeout in milliseconds all the way up to 8,000 and probably the update interval also increased. So just max that out if you're on a wireless connection. In my case, I'm not on a wireless connection, so I'm just going to leave it on 2.5 and I'll leave this on, I guess, 2.5 as well. So from there, we should be good. So at this point, we can then head to the server and there's two ways that you can install things. You can take package files that you already have on your computer and you can just drag them in to the application and then say yes to add files. So this is a PS1 package and a Sega Saturn package. And then we can add all of those to the queue and then go to the processing center where we can click the queue scanner and then auto start to start the installation. And if we switch back over to the console, you can see the application gets added there and there it is ready to play for the Sega Saturn package. And you can see that's also been added to downloads. And there we go. It is now installed, ready to play only took a few seconds because I'm on a wired connection. With that, that's one way that you can do things and you can press the minus button to get rid of them once you're done. If we head to server, we can also get rid of these now. So another option, if you go into the server settings, other than dragging and dropping, you can go to the base files, which will be the location that you selected. In my case, my J downloader folder that has all of my package files in it. So you can also point the application to a folder uh, that has all of your package files and then you can just search through them here and install whichever ones you want. So in my case, if I scroll down to the bottom, you know, we've got Minecraft, I'll add that. We've also got PT, I'll also add that one. And then again, I can go back to the processing center and start these. So Minecraft it is already installed. It's only 170 megabytes. And then I'll do uh, PT, which is 1.48 gigabytes but you'll see how long that'll take. By the time the notification disappears, it might already be done. So there it goes. And you can see it is now finished, ready to play. Both of those installed really quick. So that is the remote package installer. But what I wanna do is show you guys how you can actually increase the speed and make it even faster. Now, especially if you're on a wireless connection, I would recommend setting this up as well because it can give you a wired connection directly from your computer to your console. And that's gonna give you the best possible speed. So essentially what you wanna do here, if we close out of this, we'll get rid of these. What we wanna do is set up a wired connection. Now, a lot of people tell me that they can't use a wired connection because the router is not in the same room as the console and the computer, and therefore they can't do a wired connection. However, what you can do is as long as your console and your computer are in the same room, then you can actually connect an ethernet cable between the two. So you plug one end of the ethernet cable into your PS5, you plug the other end into the ethernet port on your computer, and then on the computer, you go to the search bar and you search for ncpa.cpl. 
So ncpa.cpl, if you select that option, it will take you to the network connections. And in here, you can share the wireless connection that you get on your computer with the ethernet port on your computer. And the ethernet port has the PS5 plugged into it. So all you're gonna do is take your wireless connection, right click on it and go to properties, and then go to the sharing tab and check the box to allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. And then you can select a private network connection. If you get this drop down box, select the ethernet adapter as the adapter you want to share the connection with. Otherwise, if you don't get that drop down menu, you just click OK and you should be good. It should now share the internet connection that the computer's getting down the ethernet cable to the PS5. So the PS5 will get an internet connection. But another result of this is that any files that you send from the computer to the PS5 will just go straight down the ethernet cable, giving you a really, really high speed connection. So with this, there's one other change that we want to make here, which is that we go into the uh, config settings here on our remote package sender and change the server IP from our Wi-Fi adapter to the ethernet adapter itself. That way it has less hoops to jump through. It's just going straight from the ethernet adapter that is that it's being hosted on directly down the ethernet cable to the console giving you the fastest possible speeds and again you can drop the request timeout down to 2.5 milliseconds and we should be good and if you're setting this up for the first time on the ps5 you will of course need to go into your settings if you were using a wireless connection before you'll need to go into your settings and set up your internet connection in the network settings on the ps5 to use a wired connection and I'd also add Nomadic's DNS just to block the game updates as well. So once you set that up, you'll now have a full wired connection, which will give you the best possible speed. So just to demonstrate this, I've got a package file here for uh, Fortnite. This is the EZFN version, which is 17 gigabytes. So 17 gigabyte package file here. I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to add it and we'll head over to the server. We'll add that to our queue. And then we're going to tell it to start right here. So 17.53 gigs. I'm going to click play. And I'm going to switch over to the console. And you'll see how fast this is going. So again, 17 gigs, over 17 gigs. And if we hit the PS button, we can actually go to the downloads to see the progress. So go to downloads. We can see ETA Hen, direct package installer. And it's saying it's only going to take three minutes. And it's already done over two gigs already. Almost three gigabytes in just a few seconds. So that is the advantage to setting up the connection this way. You can also use things like a crossover cable. Uh, there's other ways you can do direct Ethernet cable between uh, the PS5 and the computer. If you want to go offline, for example, and not share the Internet connection from the computer to the PS5, you can just do like a direct LAN connection between the computer and PS5. And keeping the PS5 offline, if that's your thing, that's another option. So there's other ways that it can be done, but this is just a quick and easy way to get a fast wired connection between your computer and your console, especially if your router is in another room and you can't connect directly to the router. So yeah, as you can see, not long here, only a few more seconds. So in just about two minutes, we've been able to install this 17 gig file. And there it is. You may have also noticed it came up saying uh, installed 99% as soon as it was done uh, downloading because it's literally installing the application as it's downloading. So there's no extra installation step that you have to wait for once it's downloaded. It's already installed as soon as it's finished downloading. So we can just run it immediately. And as you can see, it has actually loaded successfully. So the whole package file has copied, no corruption, no issues. So yeah, this is a really awesome thing that's now built in to ETA Hen that we now have access to on the PS5, something we've been missing for a long time uh, that's been a staple on PS4 for years, but we now have access to it here on the PS5. I'm just going to wait for this to fully load just to show that it is actually, you know, working properly. And there we go. As you can see, it is working. The last thing I want to quickly mention here before we end the video is that this has a few other tricks. So one thing that you can do is go to the settings and you can also enable the homebrew store tab. And this will actually allow you to use this as a homebrew store. So this connects to package-zone, the homebrew store for the PS4 and PS5, and you can use it to just install applications directly from the homebrew store. You will need to increase the timeout most likely because it's downloading directly from a server. So it will require a higher timeout, 
but you'll be able to install the applications directly. You can just add, say, you know, the Apollo save tool. I can add that to the queue. And then from there, I can just, you know, add that to the queue and install it directly uh, by hitting the play button. And then that's going to install the Apollo save tool. It might actually work because it's only 15 megabytes without me having to increase the timeout here. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Apollo save tool has been transferred. So that gives you another idea of what you can do with this. Also, Lightning Mods is updating the Homebrew store to include this remote package installer functionality. So when you download stuff from the Homebrew store now, you can actually go into the settings and you can enable background installation of apps, which will actually use the remote package installer, the DPI method to install the applications, which is going to be a quicker, more efficient way of installing the apps in the Homebrew store instead of the previous way that it was, it was doing it before. So anyway, that's it for this video. ETA Hen version 1.7, a really useful feature added with the direct package installer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.